When I arrived at Masada at the age of 17, I was stunned by the breathtaking landscape and inspired by the stories surrounding this mountain. As I stand here this morning at sunrise, that excitement is as real as it was on the first day. Come with me and we'll take a look at this historical site, which has become a symbol of Jewish cultural identity and the ongoing struggle of mankind against oppression. Our story begins nearly 2,000 years ago when King Herod decides to take advantage of this unique geological formation located on the edge of the Judean desert. High above the Dead Sea, the lowest place on earth, with steep cliffs on all sides, Herod builds a royal refuge which is both a palace and a fortress, covered with beautiful fresco paintings and mosaic floors. Herod's incredible engineering abilities devised a colossal water system that was able to collect every drop of water that fell in this exceptionally arid region. This enabled Herod and his guests to enjoy the bathhouses, the swimming pool, and even the royal gardens. Herod's engineering skills are once more put to the test when he builds the beautiful Northern Palace. Carved into the rock, on three terraces hanging over the abyss, this was a construction achievement that amazes us to this day. Seventy years after Herod's death, Masada is captured by a group of Jewish rebels led by Eleazar ben Yair. They make use of the existing buildings, and they add living quarters, ritual baths, and a synagogue. After the destruction of Jerusalem, the 10th Roman Legion converge on Masada. Nearly 8,000 Roman legionnaires build eight camps and a wall circling the fortress. After constructing an enormous ramp made of earth and wood located on the western side of Masada, the Roman soldiers position a battering ram to destroy the wall and enable the entrance of the soldiers. The historian Josephus Flavius tells us that when all hope was lost, the commander of Masada, Eleazar ben Yair, convinces his followers, 960 men, women, and children, to choose death at their own hands rather than slavery at the hands of the Romans. The last 10 men cast lots to see who will kill the remaining nine, and after setting fire to the entire fortress, will fall on his sword. The late Professor Yigal Yadin, who led the expedition in 1963, tells us about finding what are believed to be the lots. One discovery is particularly caused us very great excitement. We found 10 or 11 small pieces of clay, sherds as we call them, each one bearing a name. Is it possible we discovered the lots drawn by the last 10 people? This belief was strengthened when we discovered the name of Ben Yair on one of the pieces. At the Masada Museum, you can see the finds from the excavation in a very unique theatrical atmosphere. Professor Yadin shares his recollections of the excavations in a sound and light presentation located on the western side of the mountain at the foot of the Roman ramp. This story of courage and sacrifice has stirred our imagination for decades and is as compelling to me today as it was when I first got here. I'll meet you at Masada. <laughs>